Hi everybody. Well, today I'm going to show you how to download financial statements real quickly and simply into Excel and how you can begin right away to start analyzing the merits of a company. So there's a really nice website that the SEC has, uh, SEC Edgar, and it allows you to get the financial data for pretty much any company that you're thinking about, particularly in the United States. So you just type in SEC, if you forget SEC Edgar into Google and this page comes up right away. You could also obviously copy this link and, you know, save this in your, in your, uh, you know, folder. But let's just pick up a real simple company. Let's take a look at Walmart. We all know Walmart. Its ticker is WMT. So if you just type in the ticker, it comes in there. If not, you could type in the company name and search for it. And so you go ahead and you pull that up and just click on it. And it goes into Walmart's information and pops up a bunch of reports, 8Ks, 10Ks, all kinds of stuff. The 10K is your annual report, so that's what we're going to go off of. 10Qs is going to give you more recent information, uh, quarterly reports. 10K comes out once a year. It's an annual report, and it is audited. So let's just go ahead and, and hit that one. Now I'm going to uh, click on that, and you see a number of things come up. And I've already looked at the 10K of Walmart earlier today, so you can see I've got it in red here. But you can either open it up in a PDF like that. So if you click on that, you're basically going to get a PDF of the whole entire annual report. I'm going to do this, the filing, because this allows me to get into Excel. And so, um, so this comes up, kind of a weird looking page. But if you hit interactive data, then give it a second. And it says view Excel documents. So let's go ahead and do that. View Excel document. This is going to put the entire 10K into an Excel document. It's pretty incredible how quickly this happens. Actually, it takes longer to open Excel than it does to, you know, download the data. But let's just give it a second here. Okay, and I'm going to hit Enable Editing, and you will see down here I have a number of spreadsheets. I've got the cover page, statement of income, so the income statement. I've got, you know, uh, balance sheet. That's another key statement. Shareholders' equity. Uh, I've got cash flow, statement of cash flows, and then you can keep going. I've got footnotes. I've got all kinds of stuff. It goes on and on and on. So that's good to know. We're going to focus just on three statements. We're going to look at this income statement. We're going to look at the balance sheet. We'll look at the statement of cash flows real quick to do some analysis and get you out of here. Okay, so let's take a look at the income statement. Well, what can we find right away? So you can see Walmart kind of has a strange... Uh, fiscal cycle. Their their fiscal year ends January 31st. Maybe it's because they're a retail shop and maybe they do quite a bit of uh, selling during Christmas and so they want to make sure they capture all of that uh, selling that happens during that month. So they do the end of January for their fiscal year. So let's just say we want to do, I don't know, gross profit margin. So to do that, the gross profit is simply net sales minus, or excuse me, let's just do total, let's do total revenues because that includes their memberships in, say, Sam's Club and something else, other, other, other memberships that they might have. So let's do total revenues minus cost of sales. That's your gross profit. And if I want to do the margin, so this gives me my gross profit here. And if I want to do profit margin, then I would simply divide that again by total revenues. So let's do that. And you can see that Walmart runs profit, a gross profit margin of 25%. That seems pretty high, doesn't it? Well, let's take a look at their net profit margin, because a lot of Walmart's costs come after the gross costs. The gross costs are really, you know, costs of costs of sales. That's like your cost of goods sold. But they've got a lot of these other costs, like operating costs, uh, overhead. And so, and you know, so let's, let's take that into account. And so their net profit margin is simply going to be their net income, which is down here towards the bottom. And that's going to be, uh, let's see, let's do net income attributable to Walmart. So factoring out non-controlling interests, Walmart income divided by total revenue. And that's a much smaller number, 3%. So it is kind of a low margin business. Now, that doesn't mean that Walmart's a bad company in and of itself. It could mean that, you know, that's just the way, the nature of the beast. And you would want to compare that net profit margin to, say, Target or some of their other competitors in the retail space. Now, um, what else could we look at here? Let's take, you know, even simple things like what's the tax rate that Walmart pays, you know, 
uh, so they've got provision for income taxes and income before taxes. So Walmart pays, you know, six point eight billion dollars of income taxes divided by the income uh, the income before taxes. So they paid thirty three percent tax rate last year, which is kind of surprising because you know the actual corporate tax rate is closer to twenty one percent today. But there might be other factors that cause that some historical gains that they needed to account for. So that's that's your income statement. Now on the balance sheet, which is over here, they give you two years. You know, if I wanted to go back farther, I could I could keep searching in that Edgar database for you know last year's ten k or the year before ten k, and every year it would give me say two the two running years of uh, the balance sheet. So you could do simple things like, for example, the current ratio. If you're a bond analyst, you know, bond analysts are interested in the current ratio. And so that would be something like some summarizing current assets. And do we have current assets? And then we don't have them summed up. So we have, oh yeah, we do. So we just can do this. We can just go equals current assets divided by current liabilities. And current liabilities, of course, are right here. It gives you that number, okay, 97. So it's less than one. So a lot of people like to see that number greater than one, but I have no concerns about that. I think it's a fine number at one. You know, you could look at other things here. You could look at, you know, the debt to equity ratio or other types of ratios here to understand their capital structure. One thing that people like to look at a lot is, say, the return on equity. That combines both the income statement and the balance sheet. So let's do that number. So for this, we would do net income. Let's do net income again. So right here. And when we do ROE, because we have an income statement item in the numerator, we actually want to do the, uh, we generally want to do the, what you would call the average of the equity from these two years. I would generally want to do the average equity level between these two years, which would be some number of about, say, $77 billion. I, for now, just to keep it easy, I'm just going to choose the most recent equity number. And I get an ROE of 17%. That's a pretty good return on equity, actually. OK, so 17%. OK, and the last thing let's take a look at is statement of shareholders, uh, statement of, of cash, cash flow statement. So you want to look to see, are they generating cash from operations because cash is not income and income is not cash you know what you want is a company ultimately to throw off a lot of cash in, in their company and Walmart is certainly doing this this is the net cash provided by operating activities so uh, so we take a look at this they've gone from 27 billion a few years ago to 25 to 36 billion dollars and uh, uh, for the kind of the fiscal year 2020 if you want to think of it that way which is during a pandemic, so Walmart doesn't seem to have suffered any ill effects on the cash side. What um, what has uh, what have they done with that cash? Well, they can invest in property, plant, and equipment. So th Walmart keeps it going. You know, they're they're investing 10 billion a year in property, plant, and equipment. That could be buying other buildings, expanding stores. It could be buying trucks for deliveries. It could be doing a lot of things with that with that kind of investment. So they use 10 billion dollars the last. Uh, couple of years roughly in investing activities for financing activities they're also if you kind of go to the bottom here net cash used in financing activities they are what you would call shrinking their income their equity and balance they're, they're shrinking their balance sheet if that's what you want to think about it is they're paying back the people who have financed the firm and so and you can see that here they are paying back long-term debt you know, a lot of companies the last few years, years have actually been issuing a lot of long-term debt. So this number is generally a positive number, and they've been issuing debt and buying back stock. Walmart did not issue any debt or borrow any money really last year, which is interesting. Maybe it's because of the pandemic, and they wanted to be a little conservative. But they didn't issue any debt, um, but they did repay their debt, as they have to do, as it comes due. They also paid out dividends, okay? And they repurchase company stock. So again, a lot of companies are buying back stock. They generally are doing this what they call leveraged recapitalization, where they issue debt and buy back stock. You can see that here in 2020, uh, 2019 fiscal year, um, in all actuality. In that fiscal year, they sold $5.7 billion worth of, worth of debt, excuse me, $5.5 billion worth of debt 
They borrowed $5.5 billion and they repurchased about $5.7 billion worth of stock in that year. The prior year, they they borrowed $15.8 billion and with that, partially, they repurchased $7.4 billion in stock. Last year, they issued no debt and they repurchased stock. So this tells me this is a confident company. If they're, if they're um, issuing debt and buying back stock, that means they're confident in their, their future and it makes a lot of sense. They've got a good return on equity. They have uh, decent profit margins. Uh, they look like they're fiscally sound, and we can finally verify that even by you know looking in um, you know something like Yahoo Finance. I won't do that right now, but you can look at their stock price over this time period. They've done well. So, uh, anyways, this just gives you a quick snapshot of how you can download financial statements and quickly begin analyzing the merits of a company in this case Walmart and this is what it's all about making finance fun for students so thank you if you like this video feel free to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel I'll continue to make videos uh, to make finance fun for students thank you